158 of them said they knew Vera. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people put a lot of work into it. And the uh, comments that Suhail and I got because we're at the door as people were leaving were the most phenomenal comments we've ever gotten. I mean, people just absolutely, literally raved about it. And uh, by the time I got home, uh, there were members of uh, Bloomington Kiwanis Club who bought tickets and were there. They left a message on my answering machine congratulating me, but I got to let them know they need to congratulate Vera because they had such a good time. So it went over really, really well. Um, is that everything, David? Is no, that you were going to make an announcement about right. something else. Um, on behalf of the worship committee, last week we put uh, brochures in the bulletin about the um, uh, uh, World Communion Sunday and the peace offering that we're going to be taking that day. And um, this brochure really covers exactly what the Presbyterian Church does on World Communion Day and what the offering is for. There's more of them in the narthex. If you didn't grab it last week, read it over. It really help you. We have it in English and Spanish. They're both out in the narthex. Thank you, Alan. And Vera, thank you for coming in so that we can applaud you. And really, and, uh, regarding the food fair, we can't. I, there were just so many people that were involved with it. I, I probably 50 people, and I, I'm always afraid I'll leave somebody out. But it is true that uh, Rachel Lube and Alan Keyes and Vera Heiting uh, coordinated it and did a splendid job. And so be sure and thank you for that. And yes. The comment I got was that we should charge more for it, and if we can do it, a weekly event. <laughs> <laughs> so we said no. <laughs> well, we will charge more for it, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, it's been the same price for 12 years, and I think it needs to go up. <laughs> Talking about 12 years, I, it's 12 or 14 years ago that, uh, uh, or maybe even longer than that, 15, 16 years ago, a family um, began being part of this church family has contributed to very, very wonderfully, and and um, and they have a son who is my favorite person in the whole world. And that's Tarek, who just walked in and I wanted to say hi. I'm serious, he's, he's, he's the best. But his mother, of course, is our uh, uh, liturgist this morning. First time in 15 or 16 years, we finally guessed. Finally got around to her. And uh, she's a very accomplished person, and so I don't know what took her so long. But we're just really tickled that Rula Hanania could be our liturgist today. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? We'll concern ourselves with prayers and, uh, a little later on. Any announcements? Well, uh, a lot of us are tired from yesterday, but we're very happy we're here to worship and praise Jesus Christ. Let's begin this worship with silence. <clears throat> Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Let us all rise and sing together the opening hymn, The Church's One Foundation, number 442.
I think that also means. I believe in God, 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 God Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Do we have any youngsters here today? Watch your watch. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Good slash tired. Good slash tired. You slash tires? Is that what you say? <laughs> oh, you're tired. You woke up really late and so you're tired? You're confusing me, do you? I thought if you woke up early, you'd be tired. Okay. Hi, Logan. How are you today? Are you tired also? Um, Alexander, we have a date with destiny coming up, don't we? I'm excited about this. Hey, I have to add, come up here and, and help me with this. Wait just a minute. Now, I want you to stand here. All right? But just stand here. Now, in the very back, there's a, a person. Um, that has on um, a red jacket. Do you see it? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You're too small. <laughs> oh. And is that my fault? Yeah. Oh, so you're standing up though and you can't see back there. Why not? You're too small? Yeah. What would be the way to see back there? How, could, how could you see farther? Yeah, but I'm not going to let you do that, so <laughs> you can't do that. So how are you going to see farther? You have to stand on the chair. That's right. Well, how are you going to get up on the chair? With my feet. With your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make the chair? Away. Did you make the pew? Did you make this? No. Who made it? don't know. You don't know. Was it a little girl that made it? No. Oh, who, who made it? Maybe a big person? Yeah. Why did they make it? So they can sit on it. So you can sit on it. Or, in your case, so that you can do what? Stand on it. Yeah. So sometimes, if we want to see farther, we have to stand up, right? So I'm going to just stand on this. Oh, you're so, oh, you're so heavy anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see her now. <laughs> <laughs> I see her now. She's a very nice lady. She's a very nice lady, and yes, you do see her. Now, you see her now because you're standing on something that somebody built, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I put you on my shoulders, would you be able to see farther, or would you be able to see not as far? Farther? You'd be able to see farther, but I'm not going to put you on my shoulders because I'm an old man, and I can't lift you up that high. <laughs> No, 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 we don't go, yeah. We <laughs> say, oh, Moksani, you're so right. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is that sometimes if we want to see farther, we have to get up higher, right? And sometimes to get up to, to see farther, we have to maybe, do you, ever, do you ever get on top of your dad's shoulders? Yeah. Yeah, and you when do that you're when you're tired of walking, right? And your dad puts you up on his shoulders and he walks you around, right? Because he, because he doesn't like you? Does he do that? No, because sometimes I get tired. Because sometimes you get tired. And does he do it because he likes you? Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, your daddy likes you very much. I think he even loves you. Okay? All right. 
<laughs> what we're going to do is, oh, who's going to have me sing? Do you want to have me sing? No? <laughs> <Do it's> right. <laughs> I want you to help me sing. You sure you don't want to help me sing? Can you read this, okay? Yeah. No? Well, what number is it? Three. three. Number three, okay. Uh, would you please play, play it through with gusto once for us? Concerns of the church, in particular in the church universal, where we left up all in prayer and praise. Jim, it's good to see you here, and look like you're getting along better. That's a joy to have you, Angie. It's always good to see you. Angie's Jim's sister up from Texas and staying here for a while. We're just glad to see you always. So, Jim, we'll continue. They work so far, our prayers, so we'll continue them, all right? Um, any other prayer concerns? Yes. Our friend Lena in Jordan. Uh, Lena. Yeah. Yeah. And I have an uncle in Lebanon. His name is Ramsey. He's dying from a hemorrhage in his brain. All right. Yes. Some of my friends in uh, Israel tell me that war is brewing in Israel in the Middle East. Iran has put uh, warships in the Red Sea. Likewise, Israel has put red, uh, warships in the Mediterranean and in the Red Sea. And they're all in anticipation of this vote that's coming up in the United Nations uh, soon, this uh, week or so. And they're afraid that if it passes, that war is going to break out. So we might uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Right? Okay. Yes? My mother is having trouble breathing. CC. Uh, and travel overseas for Vera and Garrett when they go to Holland. See their new grandbaby. Yay. Max. That's yep. the boy's name, right? A great name. Um, 
also, yes. A uh, prayer for my sister Barbara, who's having a uh, horrific struggle with her cancer right now. And you're on the mend yourself? I am. Thank you. Good. All right. Uh, also, I don't know. Yes. September 11 victims, 10th anniversary. But maybe somebody would know this. I know Reverend Lorimer would know this, but uh, in the paper I read where a, a, a minister named Myron Welty died. Myron was involved with the Presbyterian Church over in Jordan Village for years, uh, preaching over there. He's a good man, and, uh, and when I was a moderator over there for about six years, I got to know Myron quite well. And I think he knew Myron, maybe. And I think some of you knew him. So uh, just, just, just wanted to make sure that his name is lifted up, that's all. All right, then let us turn our attention to prayer. <coughs> this is a good day, Lord. All days are good, and this one's no different. And it's a good day because it's the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we're glad in it, and we're sustained. For all we need for this one day we have, and in abundance. For those who are in Christ Jesus, we always live a life of abundance, regardless of our material possessions and regardless of health concerns. Always life is abundant for those who live in Christ. We think also on this day 10 years ago when um, our, our country was attacked by people that um, that we're not happy. And our country is still standing. Our people are still unhappy. And, um, and we're mindful of the, the loss of life. We're mindful of the, um, the forever nature of that uh, act of aggression. We're mindful of the harm that was done and the sorrow. And yet, throughout our country today, memorials are being erected, songs are being sung, people are being remembered. Tears, to be sure, are being shed, but also, um, it's still a good country, and we're still united, flawed as we are, and, and we're all right. As always, we pray for the victims, and we also pray for those who have been victim by uh, an ideology that is harmful to humankind. And we pray for peace for all peoples. We're mindful of the troubles in the Middle East. <clears throat> We're mindful of the troubles here in the United States, but in the Middle East we ask that you abide with the good people in Jerusalem, that you abide with the decent people throughout that uh, region, and uh, that you would give them the wisdom um, of God, and, and, not, and not their own selfish determinations. And as always, we pray for Jim McCartney, grateful that he's with us, and smiling and, uh, uh, and fighting. And we lift him up, and we lift up um, John's sister as well, who's been fighting cancer, and asks that you be with, with Barb. That you be with um, Cece, and that you abide with her, and that you restore um, Michelle's mother to a measure of good health. That you be with Ramses and that you restore him to good health, as well as Elena. We ask that you be with all members and friends of this fellowship whose bodies are less than perfect, and that you would hold them in the hollow of your hand, and that at this moment you would call them by name, and, and they hear their name being called, and in so hearing, um, hear that they are loved by you. We ask travel mercies 
for all who are going on holiday, particularly for the high teens as they uh, venture to their homeland and see their grandson Max and their daughter Deborah and, and that all would be well. We give thee thanks also for this good day and for the opportunity that we can worship and adore thee and that we can do so with a sound mind and a pure heart and that we can say this our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much. And we continue now with the sharing of our tithes and our offerings. <laughs> not only through these gifts, but also through our acceptance of others as a welcoming and loving community of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> our scripture today is going to be from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. In the Pew Bible, it's going to be page 875. Large, the large print is going to be in 1768. For as the body is one, and faith, and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. 
and if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more these members of the body, which seem to be more feeble and necessary, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have, have more abundant comeliness, <coughs> for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in, in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. The second reading is going to be from Hebrew chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. In the Pew Bible is page 917. And in the large print is page 1855. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest, lest ye will be weary and faint in your minds. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, and I will advise the office to make sure that we don't wait another 14 years. <laughs> this out, but knowing what little I know about online, <laughs> it's probably wrong anyway. I don't know who first is accredited with the phrase, standing on the shoulders of giants. But I do know all humble men and women, when asked the reason for their triumphs, attribute their achievements to others. In this respect, all people one meets are in some way or another one's superior. This lesson was taught me by Wayne Kellams, I wanted to note that, in Edinburgh, Indiana some 40 years ago, and to him I give attribution. Further, though much derided, uh, former First Lady Hillary Clinton was right. Um, she said it takes a village to raise a child. Truth be known, we're the sum parts of the experiences of, of our environment that was given us. Or victims of it. In much the same way, um, the DNA coding that we have, we didn't pay for that, earn it, deserve it, that just happened to be given us. In a similar way, the country that we were given and didn't earn happens to be something that dropped into our laps, the color of our skin. Where are the sum parts of all of that? <clears throat> be it environmental, be it uh, our family, uh, be it our schools or our sacred institutions, all have made this <coughs> contribution to the whole. And when functioning properly, it is to build the whole up. Yes, some may argue that many great people rise above their family and cultural depredations. However, I would argue always, and I would say without exception and without any apology, somewhere in this mix was a teacher, a parent, a mentor, 
who fueled the aspirations of success. <coughs> Humble people recognize that and state so in their testimonies. So do Christians speak only of Jesus as a reason for their successes. And I, I, I don't mean that successes obviously in the material sense. Not so much material profit, mind you, but their elevation is a person of honor. Their elevation is a person of courage, a person of truthfulness. All honorable Christians uh, attribute Jesus Christ um, to that character elevation. An often recounted story, one that I've done I think once before, <clears throat> is that of Polycarp, Bishop of uh, Smyrna, which is modern day Turkey now, in the mid second century, around one, I think 155, something like that. And uh, he was quite a man. And what happened with, with Polycarp, he was highly regarded, of course, and beloved. But when he was faced with death or denial of Christ, a chronicler was able to be there at this uh, trial and wrote this. And when finally he was brought up, this is Polycarp, there was a great tumult on hearing that Polycarp had been arrested. There, and you need to understand, Polycarp was a very gentle man. He, he was not a rabble-rouser. He was a gentle, kind man. He wasn't a threat to anybody except the world. And that's the only, and, and the military establishment. He was a threat to them, although he didn't kill people. All right. And when he was finally brought up, there was a, a great tumult hearing that Polycarp had been arrested. Therefore, when he was brought up before him, the proconsul asked him if he were Polycarp. And when he confessed that he was, he tried to persuade him to deny the faith, saying, have respect to your age. And other things that customarily follow this, such as swear by the fortune of Caesar, change your mind, stay away with the atheists. But Polycarp looked with earnest face at the whole crowd of lawless heathen in the arena, and he motioned to them with his hands, then groaning and looking upward to heaven, he said, um, away with the atheists. But the proconsul was assistant and said, Take the oath and I shall release you. Curse Christ. And Polycarp said, Eighty-six years I have served him, and he never did me wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? Among other reasons, that's why Polycarp is a great man. But what he was doing is he was standing on the promises of Jesus Christ. He was standing on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And as such, he was able to say such. The Christian would never say, I might add, as with Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. And Frank is doing it his way now, I might add. Um, well, he is. Uh, the Christian would never say, I did it my way, but uh, rather the Christian would say, uh, all I've accomplished uh, for the good is because of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Or as Paul states in Philippians, I can achieve all things in Christ who gives me the strength. Standing on the shoulders of giants. People who are successful acknowledge that. People who have issues with their egos are unable to do that. Today is September 11th, 2011. In 1976, <coughs> this day, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, something very marvelous happened. Some of you know. Some of you don't know. But I'll tell you, because it was a very important event. My daughter Erin was born. 
<laughs> I, true story, I always forgot her date. I knew it was the 10th or the 11th. And I could now I always remember it's the 11th. But anyway, and my birthday, interestingly enough, is on uh, November 22nd. For those of you over 50, you know what that means. Anyway, <laughs> my daughter was born on uh, uh, September 11th, uh, 1976. And she too, by all standards, has accomplished much. She's been very successful in what she's, what she's done. She's been teacher of the year. Um, she's doing other things. And that's, that, I'm very proud of her. And uh, she's, she's going places. She has also raised a son by herself uh, who has Asperger's. That's a, a form of, uh, of autism. Uh, the boy's uh, father wasn't able to take care of his son, so he left that up to my daughter. And so my daughter takes, has taken care of a, um, my grandson, who's now 13, and done a great job. And, uh, and because of Aaron, Aiden's going to be just fine. He's going to be fine. He's a good, good lad. But let there be no mistake about it. Without Aaron's father and mother, she would have probably failed. Instead, we bore her on our shoulders through difficult times, uh, through her very difficult times, and we carried her weight until it ached. We put her on our shoulders. And, and, and she learned that lesson and she's taken her son, my grandson, and put him on her shoulders. You know, that's what you're supposed to do, unless you have to do it your way. Today is, uh, in case you've forgotten, September 11th, 2011, and 10 years ago, firefighters rushed into hell. Uh, they climbed, ironically, up into hell to put on their shoulders damaged, frightened, confused men and women. There's that great poster you've seen with the firefighter that says, while well, others were running out, no, he was running in. Put on their shoulders. They, the firefighters, did so out of a sense of duty and honor and being truthful. You see, obviously, what I'm getting at, you see, people of honor and duty and truth are not narcissistic, selfish slobs. They're, they're, they're people who bear other people. They put them on their shoulders so that those people can see farther and dream, dream, dream more dreams and, and, and see greater things. They don't step on them so that they can get higher. <clears throat> the firefighters did so out of a sense of dignity and honor and being truthful to their cause, and they're great human beings. And their greatness was to save others by lifting them up and burying them. They, the firefighters, are giants on which survivors rested on their shoulders. A long time ago, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, a symbol of suffering and shame. And on that cross, on his broken, bloody, torn body, Jesus went into the fires of hell to lift each of us up 
on his shoulders. That that if you care to finally deal with it, you will go beyond selfishness. You will, be, you, will go, you will go beyond narcissism. You will go beyond having to have it your way. You will be, you'll be able to go beyond having to tell your rights. You will be able to go um, farther than saying, me, me, me. You will be able to, to lift people up because you were lifted up by Jesus Christ. And having been lifted up by Jesus Christ, you will want to lift other people up instead of always having to be taken care of. You finally will be able to take care of others. This is the greatness we are supposed to be about, to carry others on our shoulders, the lonely, the afflicted, the impoverished, the crazy, the foolish, and that we might bring them into a state and in a new place where they'll finally be able to see. And in seeing, learn to emulate. And in emulating, learn to do the same for others. I, for one, am glad that Jesus lifted me up a long time ago. And for whatever blessings and achievement I have ever accomplished, I can say this with all truthfulness, I accomplished nothing except what Jesus Christ accomplished through me. Amen. Miriam, where is she? Is Miriam here? Come here. <laughs> Miriam, you can help us sing? She is. All right, well, come up here, dear heart. We can sing into this. Let's all stand and sing our closing hymn, on Jesus, <coughs> I promise.
gracious and heavenly God, good these people are, and better yet, in your service. I would ask that all be encouraged to be about imitating Christ. And may the blessings of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, rest upon every single person here, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.